Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. I just got a package from Marseille, France, from a Bruno Koshiliak. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, but it might not be a Tarot de Marseille, even though it's from Marseille. And it might not be created by Bruno because I went on the site and checked and Bruno K and Pauline A are co-founders of the Mystic site, but I think Pauline might be the creator. Now, I went on the site to check because I got this as a Kickstarter a long, long time ago, and I wanted to double check what it was I had received. Um, and now I recall that I backed this for a couple of reasons. One was that I at first was not certain I wanted to back it, yeah? I was hesitant, and I was hesitant for quite a while, but I finally backed it because I kept thinking about it. And usually when I keep thinking about something, it means that there's something there for me, I think. So I finally backed it. Um, another reason is because it's supposedly based on chiaroscuro, which is a style of art. Um, some of the most famous artists that I know are Caravaggio, and I know that because my mother has a copy of a Caravaggio painting, a painted copy, in our living room, and I love that painting. Also, uh, Rembrandt and Leonardo da Vinci are famous for chiaroscuro, and chiaroscuro means, chiaro in Italian means bright, shiny, uh, light, kind of, um, and oscuro means dark, dingy, gloomy. So bright, sh shiny, dark, dingy, shiny, dingy. And the name of the deck's, deck is Lux et Umbra, which in Latin means light and shadow. So that intrigued me, that balance. I liked the idea of the balance. But I also recall that there were things about the art style that I was not certain would would be my style. So let's take a look at it together and see if this really was a good purchase for me. And I'll give you a chance to look at it. It's available on their site now. So take a look, see if you're interested. If you are, I'll give you the information and a link below to go to their site and get it for yourself. There's also an Oracle deck, which uh, was also a Kickstarter, which I thought should I wait until that comes out to do the um, to do a comparison? But I double checked, and that Oracle deck is going to take a lot more time because of the pandemic. So I thought let's look at the tarot deck together right now. So friends, let's look inside the box. This box is from Mystic, and let me see if I can get into this without cutting anything. I think I see a flap here. Um, okay, okay, I don't think I need to cut any. Okay, we're in. Um, so inside the box, there is a beautifully, wow, beautifully wrapped um, wax seal, love that. And there is, it looks like a pouch. There's a pouch in there. And there is a, okay, it looks like there's a bookmark and a card. Um, here's some information about their Instagram account and some very lovely, I love this stuff. I love this new packaging, which is recyclable. And so for the colors of this deck, the color of this bunting or packaging is perfect, don't you think? <laughs> so let's put that back in the box and let's start with the card and the, what looks like a bookmark. Let's put this to the side, put this to the side, leave the deck here and open this up. And it's easy to open, which is also wonderful. 
Okay, I think it's easy to open. Let's see if I can get my finger in here. And one, two, three, skidoo. Okay, here we are. So, lovely card. If you were to guess, what card do you think this is from? Would you say the Hierophant? I think you would be right. So, we have a raven for the Hierophant, I believe. And here is the bookmark. A very small bookmark, but a very lovely bookmark. Um, wow. Very, very nice. There's, this is a sticker. So let me take it off the sticker carefully. I don't want to bend it. Um, so you get the full effect of the small, le petit, le petit um, bookmark. Lovely. I wonder how long this is going to last with me. I tend to be a little bit rough on my objects. We'll see, but I love it. It's beautiful. So that's the bookmark. Here's the card. Does it say anything? Nope, nothing on the back, just an art card. Well, it's an art card. I will add it to my art card collection. I have a stack of them that I um, change out in a picture frame in my office. So one, one per week, I usually change out. So here is the, oh, I don't want to ruin the seal. I don't want to ruin the seal. Is there a way to get into this without breaking the seal? Let's see, can I perhaps separate the seal from the paper? I don't need to save the paper, though it is a lovely color of black. I love that. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. We have the seal removed, and let's see if I can slide this up. Okay, okay, let's, oh, look, there's a card. There's another card in the back. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's see if I can do this. Let's, okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm going to be able to save the seal. Let's see, here we go. Maybe I will do this off camera. I'll be right back. Here we have the seal removed, very nicely removed. And I think I might save that. I'm not sure what I will, where I will put it, but I think I will save that. Set it aside and let's look inside the little folder here. The little envelope, I should say. Looks at Umbra Tarot, light and shadow or shiny and dingy tarot. Mystic. And here we go. Okay, so it's number 227 out of 840. Um, this is the signature of the creator. I think this is probably Pauline's signature. Pauline A. She doesn't list her last name on the site. We'll see if it's inside the deck. Okay, so here we go. Opening the package. I love this sticker. Can you see the holographic shine on the sticker? This star, I believe, is their symbol, their logo, if you will. Okay. Black paper. For those who dislike seeing paper ripped, I'm very sorry. It's being ripped. And there's plastic inside. Okay. So, here's the deck in plastic. Let's see. I will get my... Well, let's see. I think I can do this without getting a sharp implement. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. And the plastic is coming off fairly readily. Oh, this box is gorgeous. Okay, so let's see. Can you see the stamping, the cold stamping on the box? Maybe I'll bring you in just a little bit, just a little bit. Let's see if this will focus. Hello, hello. There we go. We, yes, yeah, so this is cold stamped, yeah? And this is, there's cold stamping on the front. It looks like a constellation. There you go, can you see that? Okay, there we go. And the name of the, com the mystic is down here, though it's not very in focus. Trust me, it's there. And we have the moon on one side. More stars. 
light out of shadow. Light out of shadow. And here we have the sun on the other side. So again, I think it was the balance of this deck that I was anticipating. The balance of light and dark. Um, let's see. Okay, this box is a tuck box that wants a little bit of finesse to open. So, so I don't damage the box. Let me get my implement of opening. Um, I usually like to use a pair of, well, I usually like to use a letter opener, but I don't have a letter opener here. So I will carefully use a pair of scissors. So the technique, gently slide the scissors inside the box and lift. And then back from the other side. Now this is the sharp side, this is the dull side. Gently insert and lift. And there we have an opened box. This works much better with a letter opener. So here we go inside the box and the guidebook is on top. I don't know what the order of these cards is going to be. Um, now this feels like a large-ish deck. Let me move the box out of camera range and bring these into camera range. Let's see, I'm going to turn this around. I want to do a little bit more of a reveal. So he, these are, this is the back. This is the back. The back is cold stamped. You can see moons. You can see constellations. Yeah. We have the book right beside it. Lux et umbra tero. Um, let's look at the book briefly. So the book, Lux et umbra tero. Uh, created and illustrated, created, illustrated, and écrit par Pauline. Okay, écrit. Oh, written. Okay, created, illustrated, and written by Pauline A. Co-created by Bruno K. I think that is the. Oh, <laughs> here, here's English right below. Created, designed, and written by Pauline A. Co-written by Bruno K. Okay, so um, the. Primary creator is Pauline A. And their company, their firm, their website is Mystic. Light out of shadow. La luminaire surgit de l'ombre. Okay, my French is not that good, but still, I tried. Um, and here we have a table of contents in French. Um, although it says English version, page 58. Let's see, what's on page 58? There we go. English version, page 58. So the French version goes from page 4 to page 56. The English version goes from page 60 to page uh, 112. So, yeah, it looks like they're comparable. Yeah. Version Francais, one. <laughs> uh. So English version. Let's look at the English version so you don't have to suffer my French pronunciation. Um, a word from the creator. In 2018, I became seriously ill following an emotional shock. And this is Pauline. Initiated to the practice of Tarot de Marseille a few years ago, I found comfort in it as well as drawing and in, in comfort in it as well as in drawing and art therapy which allowed me to get in touch with my inner life. Why not create my own tarot? I felt the vital need to embark on this crazy project. And during those moments of grace when inspiration struck and soothed me with its magic, my sorrows subsided. I think the creative energy helped me through these difficult times. I'm grateful to be able to share my experience because for me, this project is above all a message of hope and resilience to give even more meaning to our work, a percentage of the profits are donated to associations involved in the fight against breast cancer. And that I checked on their website is true. Um, they donate, I think 2% of proceeds to one or to a breast cancer um, organization. So that's good to know, to remember. Um, the tarot, a centuries old tradition represents the structure of the universe. The 22 major arcana 
from Mat or the Fool uh, to the World 21 are composed of archetypal images and symbols and symbolize the different stages of an initiatory path. Derived from Neoplatonic philosophy, the term archetype refers to the universal patterns found throughout all cultures, myths, and dreams. Thanks to its rich figurative language, the tarot connects to our collective and personal unconscious. I believe that is true. It lends each person, it leads each person to introspection and understanding of their psyche, which is the primary reason that I returned to tarot after um, more than 20, maybe almost 30 years of absence from tarot, because I wanted to use it as a tool uh, for redeveloping my intuitive abilities, for reconnecting to my innate and inner knowing. Um, and so I think her introduction and her view of the tarot is perfectly in line with mine. And so what do we have? We have light and shadows, a description of that. Um, let's read a little bit of this. The Lux at Umbra tarot deck draws its inspiration from the world's magic. Its 78 illustrations were created in digital painting from Latin Lux, light, and Umbra, shadow. Beyond fortune-telling, tarot is the ideal tool to support a projective work. The notion of shadow, which was defined by Carl Gustav Jung, founder of analytical psychology, represents the positive or negative parts of our personality that we have repressed. Now, I think that's important. Many people think of the shadow as the negative things, but they can be positive things as well. They're just things that we are not giving our attention to. There are things that we are um, have set aside that we are not shedding light on. That is the shadow. So um, let me skip. No, well, skip. No, the uh, parts of our personal verse. Okay, the recognition and rec reintegration of the shadow can help us evolve and develop our spirituality. Mirror of the unconscious, tarot promotes self-discovery, self-knowledge, and self-knowledge. Each card of the deck contains its share of lights, upright, and shadows, reversed. Lights? And here the moon is shadows. So we have the structure, we have correspondences, you know, the cards and planets, uh, cards and, um, what do we call them, astrological signs, and a lot of good information. And so here we have the actual cards. There are no images in the English version or the French version. Um, and the description is, is very brief. For example, Mat, La Mat, the fool. Uh, free as the wind, the fool takes off on a journey. In the distance, he can see a light that penetrates darkness. Will he follow the way? Light or upright meaning? Freedom, discovery, innocence, enlightenment, shadow, bewilderment, naivete, naivete uh, recklessness, chaos. So you see, there are brief keywords and a brief description of each card. Not much for the major arcana. And let's see, Le Pendu, my favorite card, La Lune. The minor arcana we have. Okay, so we have the four suits fire, earth, air, and water, and their associations to the four suits of the wands, the pentacles or denier, swords, and the cups. And then we have the court cards, and let's see, the rayon, the baton, denier. We have the major, the court cards. Brief description, one brief description for each court card. And nothing for the pips. Is there anything for the for the small cards? Let's see. The baton. Ace to ten. Okay, so from ace to ten, what we get are keywords and the elemental signs. So for example, the fire, which would be wands, vital drive, strength, creativity, passion 
initiative, independence, depression, dispersion, I'm sorry, dispersion. And then the num the numerology, number one, initiation, beginning. So be initiation of the strength, the initiation of creativity, or beginning of initiative, beginning of dispersion, or inexperience with the vital drive. Yeah? So you would be expected to combine these on your own. So I would say for this, for this book, one would need to be somewhat familiar already with the tarot. Now, I don't think this is going to be a good full introductory book for the tarot. Yeah, so, but it's enough to get you started, probably, with additional resources. Now, the cover is, yeah, the cover is a light rose petal finish. Yeah, it's not very heavy, but it's very light with the cold stamping. And let's finally look at the cards. What do we have? The cards, I believe, are also rose petal. Yes, with cold stamping on the back. For size, here is a handy dandy US Games size card. And so you see that they are just a little bit bigger. They are bigger. They are larger. Um, so this is a US Games standard tarot size. They're a little bit bigger. And again, they're slightly rose petal. They're not as heavy as, for example, the rose petal finish of um, True Black. But you can feel it. You can feel it. They're flexible, which is good. Cold stamping. I love the backs. We have the moon, we have the sun, uh, we have the name of the company here, a copyright. So for me, this is perfectly reversible, but for some who might be a little bit more sensitive about the backs, they may feel that this is not reversible. To me, it's fine, it's fine. I don't look at the backs that carefully when I shuffle. Um, it's a thick deck, yeah, it's a chunky deck, as some would say it's a chunky monkey. Um, <laughs> there is a little bit of a split in this deck, even though it was shipped together. I'm sure that will uh, correct itself with shuffling. Um, matte finish on the sides, yeah, matte black edging. And here we go with the first card. Okay, so the first cards are here. So here we go with the Fool, Le Mat. So it's not a traditional image, is it? It's not traditional Marseille, it's not traditional Rider or weight. Um, there are no humans, but you get the path. It's something rem reminiscent of the spacious tarot. Yeah? You can put yourself here in the path, going towards the light. Uh, there are feathers. There's a universe in front of you. Interesting. Um, here we have, a, here's the batelier, the magician. Um, we have the symbol for water here. We, here's the symbol for fire. Um, don't really get much earth or, or, uh, air, but let's see. Let me look at at the book for this to see if I'm missing something. We have the two colored flowers here at the bottom. Yeah, we see creation in process. Yeah, the two elements are combining to create something in this bowl. Uh, let me look at the book in English. <laughs> let me look at the book in English uh, for Le Batelier. Uh, the magician is a free spirit, bold and creative. As a young alchemist, he skillfully handles the four elements and shapes his reality. Four elements. Okay, so I see two clearly, but I might need to sit with this card a little bit more. I mean, there could be two more here on this side, maybe. Or maybe earth and air are represented differently. Okay, well, the colors are beautiful. Ah, la papesse. We have, <laughs> for the la papesse, or in Rider weight, the high priestess, we have a jellyfish. So in the sea, clearly 
connected to that water element. Yeah? We have a Neptune symbol here at the bottom. And here we have Limpatris. So the pearl, the pearl is, I've seen used for the high priestess before in the spacious tarot. But here the pearl is a symbol of creation, I suppose, of creation in the water. Um, the spider. And here we have plants growing. Yeah, we have that creative natural, natural uh, force here. We have light and shadow. Here's the emperor. Okay, so we have a spider crawling over a diamond. We have that structure, that hardness that a lot of people see in the emperor. Um, it's perhaps a little bit cold, but also bright and shiny in the darkness. And we have the, here we go, Le Pap, the hierophant in the Rider Waite, um, carrying the key, a bird. The first, well, not the first living creature, we have spiders. We had the, um, the, the, what do you call that again? The, what is this called? <laughs> this thing. <laughs> the name isn't coming back to me. Um, it's coming in Korean. Uh, Hepari, uh, the, okay, you know what that is. That's a living creature too. <laughs> um, I'll put the name in, in a banner. So here we have the lovers. Okay, so the red and white rose. Two colors, balance of the two colors for the lovers. And I guess you can see that angel or that light from above, that divine source, perhaps, giving us something. Okay, here we have the chariot. We have the two creatures combined into one. We have the white side and the black side. Now, usually they are a sphinx or something like that. Here we have a wolf, it looks like. Yeah, we have a moon symbol on the forehead, which is interesting. Definitely a balance of light and darkness. Here we have justice in the eight position. Okay, justice looks like a, a nebula, a space formation, but it also looks like an eye, doesn't it? Um, so seeing, seeing the truth, perhaps, seeing the balance, seeing through the darkness. Maybe. And we have the hermit in nine, um, a door, a light shining through. It looks like there's, is that a mountain or is that a creature? It's probably a snow-capped mound. Oh, the roof. It, it's, we call it a roof in English, Derek. Yes, this is the roof of this, this home. Um, snow line or snow dusted. And I suppose the hermit is inside of the hermit's cave, the hermit's den, doing hermit things. Here is the wheel of fortune, the rue de fortune, the, de, the rue de fortune. I'm sorry, my pronunciation of that is incorrect. But here we have the stars moving in a circle, like in time-lapse photography. Um, doesn't that look like the hermit has come out of their abode to witness the wheel turning? And here we have a stag also witnessing the wheel turning. Here we have at 11, which would be strength or la force. We have the four elements clearly here in the hands. Now we get, personally, I get the lion from this yellow light because lion leo um is a yellow the sun color so i get the that leo lion feeling from the color in this card and then we have the first well no not the first there's a human here but human hands close up human and here we have le pendu le pendu um okay <laughs> Is this a person on top of a mound, direct, uh, receiving celestial energy, perhaps? Celestial perspective? 
okay, I want to look at the book for this because this is my favorite card usually in the tarot. Uh, let's look at Le Pendu. What do they say about the hanged man, the hanged one? The hanged man frees himself by accepting the sacrifice. From the tip of to the base, he slowly burns and his volutes of smoke rise toward the spiritual world. Okay, so this seems more of a sacrificial pendu, not one of a new perspective, but one who sacrifices and accepts and in the burning of that sacrifice, that sacrificial fire, we have a smoke that rises towards the spiritual world. world. The of like a votive smoke, the vote, the smoke of prayer or the smoke of intention rising up into the celestial world. An interesting, an interesting perspective on the hanged one, the hanged man. Here we have death as the moth. Often refer, death is uh, portrayed as a moth. We have a skull in the moth's wings, which is interesting. I like that. Uh, I wonder what the moth is sitting on, is resting on. But yeah, we got a death vibe, a soul vibe from that. And here we have temperance as a whale. Now that is interesting as well, a whale. We usually think of, I think of temperance as an alchemist, mixing, combining two elements. And perhaps because the whale is both a land and, I mean, an air breathing and a water existing creature. Perhaps that's the mixture of both land breathing, a air breathing mammal and water living creature, which usually gets oxygen through gills rather than from actual air. Hmm. Okay, so here we have the Diable, the devil, which in a... Now let's see, do we have... No, okay, so... For those who are Teo de Marseille aficionados, you see that there is no name on card 13. I misspoke when I said this is the death card. This is card 13. There is no name on this card, as in a standard Teo de Marseille deck. Here we have Temperance, and here we have Le Diable, yeah, the devil, which is a black hole, which is interesting. That could be a very devil-like image. Yeah? sucking every matter into it, drawing into it. You, there's no, es or escape seems impossible. We don't know. There might be something on the other side of the black hole, but it looks like even light cannot escape the devil. Here we have the La Maison Dieu, the house of God um, in the Rider weight which is usually a, um, a the, the tower card, which is burst apart by lightning. But this, we have a tower ablaze yeah, with perhaps the fire of God, the fire of the creator. Here in a desert setting with birds flying off. Okay, I am glad I got this deck. This deck is going to require me to sit with it, to investigate, to to uh, incorporate, to digest the images. So I'm, I'm already very pleased that I got this deck. Um, Le Toye, the star. You see shooting stars here over a lake. Gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Here we have the moon, la lune. Now let me put it next to the sun because, yes, you see we have Interesting, isn't it? The moon is a lighter, somewhat feminine looking, now to me, feminine. I'm perhaps reading too much into this card, but the sun, which is a dark skinned figure, um, looking rather male to me, could also be female. Both could be female, both could be male, it's your choice. But usually we think of the sun as bright, shining, and the moon as dark. But here we have a very bright moon figure and a very dark sun figure, and I like that. But you see, there's like an eclipse here. Yeah, there's an eclipse going on in the eye with the, <clears throat> the corona being the shine 
around the iris. Gorgeous, gorgeous faces, gorgeous images. Okay, let's move on to judgment. Okay, judgment. Um, so yeah, we've in judgment. Um, there's that idea of the soul being weighed in some uh, in some traditions. Yeah, to move on to the next stage of life, um, to move through death. There's the soul being weighed, the heart and a feather. And that's what this feather makes me think of, the weighing of the heart and the feather. We have a flame above and a book, which is an interesting symbol to include. I will need to look at this and sit with this one, clearly. Okay, and 21, which is the world, Le Monde. And instead of a figure dancing in a wreath, we have a lotus shooting out rays into the universe, a ray of spiritual energy into the universe being the world, le monde, le monde. Okay, here we have the first suit, which is fire, the ace of fire. So I believe this is going to be a total pip deck, um, but I don't think it's going to be a Marseille deck. Um, we'll see. We have the two of fire. Yeah. Get, you get that kind of crossed swords from the rider weight feel from it do you not i do let's look at the three okay so the three of wands more fire let's look at the four okay structure the four is structure so this is definitely not a marseille style layout of the wands um and it's not really a well i don't know could you see the the four wands standing up maybe from above in the rider weight four of wands the with usually with the couple in the background and the castle kind of getting ready for some sort of cel celebration perhaps a wedding could this be the four wands from above no, i'm not so sure here we have five okay now five let's see do these look competitive to you, or is it more of a Marseille style five? Um, let me take a look at the book for the five. How do they read the five? So here we have five being evolution, spirituality, passage, betrayal. So not competition, but evolution. Okay, I, you can see evolution. You can see spirituality in there, I think. Very good. Let's see the six. Okay, so again, not Marseille, but we do have a very pippish six. If you like pip decks, this deck is going to be very good for you, I think, because you can read. You can read into these images a lot. They're, the six is definitely different from the seven. And here's the eight looking very Rider Waite Smith to me. <laughs> these look like the raw, the wands shooting into the sky. And here we have the nine of wands. Now you can see the one main rod and the perhaps the border around of the other wands. Aren't these colors beautiful? The purples, the oranges. The yellows. Here we are with the yellows with the Ten of Wands. Now I'm curious to see what the court cards are going to look like. Let's move right into the courts. We have the Valet de Baton. Okay, so the Valet de Baton, we have a Sagittarius sign, I believe, here. Um, so are the court cards going to be, yes, the court cards have their astrological symbol on them, which is interesting and good will help us learn our astrological associations for these cards. The Queen, Reine de Baton. Okay, the Roi de Baton, we have the King of Wands. And then the Knight of Wands is going to be here in the final position. So this is, some decks like to put 
the Knight of Wands after the king. Now, for example, Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky in his book for his Tarot de Marseille deck, puts the knight at the end of the suit, being the one that leads into the next suit. Personally, I like the knight before the queen, but this is perfectly valid. Okay, and here we have the pentacles coming next. We have the discs, earth, the one, the two, and I can see that balance here, that Rider weight balancing act going on. We have the three. And a lily growing. Blooming. Bloomed. <laughs> Here we have the four. And we have perhaps pollen ascending. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. So do you notice the background here? We had the fire background, and here we have the earth background being green. The five. The six. Now this is a Marseille uh, arrangement here. And so is the five. The seven. This is not a Marseille arrangement of the seven. Um, but here you have it go with... These look like poppies to me. It looks like poppies going off into the distance. Poppies will make her sleep. Sleep. That's what I think every time I see poppies. Um, here we are with number eight. Um, okay, so we have a communication between the poppy above and the poppy below, between the spiritual and the physical, perhaps, flowers. And here we have the nine all growing on a vine. And here we have the 10. Interesting. Looks a lot like the ace, doesn't it? But you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 discs, pentacles, abundant flowers. And here we have the valet de denier, de denier, Here we have, okay, now, oh, I am, okay, I just noticed that. We have the symbol, and here we have the astrological name in French. Um, so this is Virgo, Virge, uh, Virge, Virge, the Virgin. And here we have Taurus, Taurus, for the Queen of Discs, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Earth. Here we have the king, Capricorn. And here we have the knight, Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter. Um, so this is a planet, not a sign. Jupiter. Interesting. Okay. So let's move on to the wands. Okay, so the color of wands is going to be this purplish color with a little bit of blue, it looks like. This purplish pinkish color. The swords. Did I say wands? I mean swords. Here we have the two of swords, which I confused for the two of wands, didn't I? I'm so sorry. So this is the two of swords. And here we have the three of swords. Okay, so here we have a nod to Rider Waite, the piercing of the heart. So this deck really is neither this nor that. It's a combination, a compilation perhaps of ideas. Here we have the Four of Swords. Here we have the Five of Swords. Okay, interesting. Here we have the Six of Swords, which in a rider weight would be the moving on, moving forward, there would be a boat here, um, moving from rough water to clear water. But you don't get that. But we do get this rain feeling, don't we? And then a light from above. So I don't know, maybe, maybe we can also draw some of our writer weight knowledge with this deck as well. We have the Seven of Swords, which would be the guy running off with... Uh, Three swords, I believe, um, and some swords being left behind, sneaking away. 
Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords, which is usually trapment. And here we have chains. So in the sword suit, I'm getting more of a rider weight feel to them. Nine of Swords, which would usually be the Nightmare card. I don't know, Nightmare? We got rain. This is very clearly rain. We got pools of water below. And no, I don't know. Okay, moving right along. The Ten of Swords, um, which is usually someone stabbed, knocked down, defeated. And well, maybe that's what this a tornado-like formation could indicate. Wiped out. Here we have the Valet of the the Page of Swords, Valet de Paix. Um, and this is Gemini. The Queen of Swords. And this is uh a, okay, this I believe is Pisces. I'd have to double check that. And here we have the King of Swords, Libra, Balance. Libra, really? I thought Libra was an air sign. Okay, here we have Mercury for the night. And the sign of Mercury for the planet. And here we have the cups. Okay, let's look at the cups. The cups, the Ace of Cups. This blue color, blue the royalish blue and the more aqua blue at the top will be, yes, the trend. And here we have the Two of Cups. And the Three of Cups. Yeah? We, you see the water moving from one to the next. We don't see so much the difference between these three cups as we would in a most rider weight uh cup three of cups cards here's the four okay they're all upright now yeah, they're all together four looking very st looking stable you know look stable so let's see i have a trouble there's five okay here's five shattered glass for the five of swords of uh, five of cups my words today are not coming out the way i hoped they would here is the six now, that's interesting. The Six of Cups looks a little bit like I would think of the Seven of Cups for the Rider Waite. These dream bubbles. And here's the Seven of Cups with a rainbow, which I would usually think of as the Ten of Cups. Interesting. But you see how the water flows from one to the next to the next. Here is the Eight of Cups underwater submerged and i'm curious what these things are are they gems are they rocks they don't look like sea life are they crystals here is the nine of cups looking a little bit like a thoth deck just a little bit reminiscent of thoth to me um, and here we have the Ten of Cups. Nine cups arising from the Ten. Instead of one feeding the nine from above, here are nine arising from the one. And here we go with the majors. Here is the page or valet de cup. And this is Poisson. Now this is probably Pisces. I got, I'm a little bit confused about that other suit. I need to double check. I'm very sorry. Valet de Cup Poison. Here is the Queen of Cups, Scorpio. This is my MBTI card and also uh, I believe my ascending card. Yeah? My, um, my moon sign is Pisces. My ascending is Scorpio, my rising. So here they are together. And here is the Roy the Cup, the King of Cups, which, which is Cancer. And here we have the Knight of Cups, which is Venus, the sign for Venus. Okay, this is the deck. What do you think?
The colors are beautiful. The This will be a good deck for study, also a good deck for using. Um, let me try shuffling and see what we get. Because, let's see, the card flexibility, again, it's flexible, but sometimes that rose petal finish will um, stick. Let's see how much this one sticks. So I will do a shuffle upright. I won't shuffle in reversals yet because I'm not ready for it. And shuffling is... Okay, so they're a little bit stiff still. But it does bridge. It bridges okay. Let me try one more. It could just have been my position. Let's see. Okay, no. Now, if you've got strong hands, it riffle shuffles nicely, and it bridges nicely, and it goes back into place very easily. It doesn't clump when you bridge it back into place. Let me try one more. And, yeah. See, that's not too difficult for a rose petal finish deck. Let me try an overhand with it. So we see if it clumps or how much it clumps. I'm assuming it will clump very nicely <laughs> if you like clumping. If you like lumps in your oatmeal and clumping in your decks. Um, here we go. Oh, oh no. Okay. Now, there we go. Look at that. It overhands beautifully. So for such a soft feel to the deck, a very soft feel to this rose petal finish, um, it overhands. Whoa, sorry. It overhands beautifully. I mean, it just slips right out of the hand. So this is a, going to be a very good deck to shuffle, especially over time when uh, you get used to it. The edges are a little bit sharp, but not horribly so. And yeah, let me pull a card for us for today and see what we get. So here we go with... The Two of Wands. Okay, now this is a lovely, lovely card. We have the Two Wands, which usually it's um, envisioning, uh, not moving forward with creation yet, but envisioning possibilities. Let's see what the book says. So for me, the Two of Wands in uh, Rider Waite is envisioning possibilities. But here it's duality, right? Duality, opposition, receptivity, gestation. So the opposition or uh, duality in, as it relates to our creativity, our passion, our initiative. So the need to perhaps make a choice. We need to make choices and then move forward with them. Um, it could also be uh, receptivity, that we're still in the receptive phase. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what we want to create. We're still trying to receive inspiration, receive that um, initiative. We're, we're open to it, we're ready for it, but we're, and we're still in the gestation or the receptive stage of our creativity and our independence, which I think is a good thing to keep in mind because Creativity when and uh, creation is never a linear path. It's not from here to there. It's cycles. And we're always, if done well, if processed well, we're always starting anew. We're always starting new things. We're always in a gestation period. That beginner's mind um, that will of course, lead forward in one way, but then we reevaluate, we, we re-view what we're doing, and we open ourselves to the next stage of creation, the next stage of development. And I think here with our passion, our creative passion, we can be reminded that we should always be open and receptive to new inspirations and new um, possibilities. So friends, what do you think? The Lux et Umbra deck, it is beautiful. 
and it is on sale at, at the site and the information will be below. And as always, friends, I wish you, though, tell me, I wish you tell me, do you have this deck? Have you used it? Have you tried it? What do you think of it? Um, do you want to get this deck? What about this deck was interesting to you or inspiring to you? Or perhaps what might have put you off about it? I'd like to hear about that too. And as always, friends, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you. So I just wanted to hop right back on briefly to um, show you this because I forgot the bag. The bag is gorgeous. We've got the key from the Hierophant card. Um, it's a black velvet-like material. The drawstring is like a uh, silk cord, um, very durable. And look at that, look at how it slides. It's wonderful. Uh, let me show you the back of the bag. Nothing special on the back, but you can see the quality is there. And putting the deck inside the bag, I'm sure it would even fit with the box. Um, but you see the deck goes in with the guidebook very nicely. There we go. So there it is. Again, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you very much.